the second name for india can be diversity you know we often say unity in diversity although there is so much of diversity still we are one even in the case of land and the practices there is diversity there are some farmers which have a small land holding and there are others who have large land holding in some places cooperative farming has started so many farmers who have small land holdings they join their land together and their inputs so that they can have better results but otherwise there can be less land there can be more land there can be less money there can be more money today agriculture is a industry which means we need modern equipments like tractors and harvesters and so on we need good variety of seeds we need manure we need fertilizers we need weedicides pesticides so all this means high output so there can be agriculture which is or high cost low cost and even probably no cost so depending upon the resources and of course more money means or high cost means high yield or high output but not not necessarily that if we don't use cost we will not get good results if we use it efficiently we will get probably the maximum now the next is nutrients you know in crop production there are many steps and we have to now learn to manage every step nutrients we are very greedy we keep on growing food year after year keep on growing the crops but we never care what will happen to the nutrient value of the soil if somebody asks you to keep on studying all the 24 hours for all the 7 days of a week you will say i am tired i am exhausted even if you keep on working sometimes parents also crib that all the time we are working so they also get fatigued so just like we get fatigued even the soil gets fatigued and there is loss of nutrients so what is the way out of course one way is just to leave the field which is called field fellow but then that means loss of crop so what we do is we add nutrients what is the way to add nutrients manure and fertilizers what is manure when all the waste of plants and animals and the dead plants and branches and twigs which is basically nothing but a farm waste when that degrades it changes into manure so actually you are only recycling the waste it has very little cost but it really improves the soil it improves the soil texture it adds organic matter it improves the growth of microorganisms and manure also has another advantage it is suitable for all kind of soil for example in the case of sandy soil it improves the water holding capacity because you see in the sand the particles are very coarse so water runs through very fast if you pour water on a on sand it will dry up in no time but we want to hold water so what we can do manure is added so that its water holding capacity improves the problem of the clay soil is that the particles are so small that the soil becomes water locked but by adding manure its running water or the ability to percolate water improves percolation of water so in addition to adding organic matter manure can do so many things the manure is pre prepared by a simple method which is called composting or vermi composting composting is simple collect the waste matter dig a pit put it in it put a layer of soil and let it be in 2 3 months you will get the entire waste 
if it was only biodegradable has changed into manure. But sometimes if we want to expedite and we want to have good quality manure, what do we do? We add red worms to it, a kind of earthworms. So the trick is done and what we get is vermi compost or the vermi composting. Third method is green manuring. In green manuring what we do is we grow plants like sun hemp and then just crush it by plowing and the result is that the live plant gets buried in the soil and the result that when it decomposes it added, adds organic matter to the soil. So, in this way we can improve the nutrient content of our soil by adding manure which can be produced by composting, vermicomposting or green manuring. Another method is use of fertilization, fertilizers. There are many fertilizers like urea, superphosphate, potassium nitrate and so on. Basically fertilizers provide three elements KPN, potassium, phosphorus and nitrogen. So depending upon what is the deficiency of your soil, you can choose the fertilizer. So fertilizer increases the yield, very good. But then what is the long term effect? See sometimes you feel that okay, if I take a little help from somebody or in other words, if I cheat, I can get good marks. But what is its long term effect? You have not really learned. Similarly, anything when used in excess can be bad. Even studying too much or studying in excess can be bad and playing of course in excess is not so good. So fertilizer also we cannot use in excess. The reason being that it changes the soil chemistry. It can make soil acidic, alkaline or saline. Acidic, alkaline or saline. Secondly, when we use fertilizers, we have to give lot of water. Otherwise, exosmosis of plants will take place and the crop will get burnt. So, more water needed, which means more input, more expense. Then when the fertilizers fall into the nearby source of water, the algae also grows, there is algal bloom and it suffocates all other organisms, we start dying, so there is water pollution. This is called eutrophication. Leading to algal bloom, leading to death of aquatic life. leading to pollution and of course the fertilizers are very expensive. So when we are choosing, we have to be careful that we have a right balance of manure and fertilizers and we do not use fertilizers in excess. These days there is a concept of organic farming. The organic farming means that we do not use chemicals at all no fertilizers, no pesticides. Then what do we do? There are bio fertilizers. Example is blue green algae. And there are also bio pesticides like neem and turmeric. If you go to villages, you will find in every house there was a neem tree because neem has not only medicinal value, it also repels the pests. So whether you are storing rice or pulses or your woolens, putting neem leaves is a good idea. Even for spraying on the crop, stunning crop, we prepare neem extract and we spray it on the crop. Uh, this is very good because it only repels the pests. It does not kill them, does not disturb the food chain, which by pesticides happens. 
और वी कैन यूज टर्मेरिक इवन एट होम यू यूज हल्दी और टर्मेरिक फॉर स्टोरिंग वेरियस थिंग्स बिकॉज इट्स अ पेस्टिसाइड इन अ डिफरेंट वे इट्स अ बायो पेस्टिसाइड सो दे इज नो हार्मफुल इफेक्ट नो वॉट इज द सोर्स ऑफ द न्यूट्रियस फ्रॉम वे कैन प्लान गेट न्यूट्रियस अफकोर्स ऑक्सीजन एंड कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड इट गेट्स फ्रॉम एयर विच आर नीडेड फॉर रेस्पिरेशन एंड फोटोसिंथिस एंड विच ऑल्सो मीन्स कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स एंड अदर रिलेटेड कंपाउंडस देन अदर सोर्स इज वॉटर हाइड्रोजन वी गेट फ्रॉम वॉटर द रेस्ट ऑफ द न्यूट्रियस वी गेट फ्रॉम सॉइल सॉइल डजेंट ओनली प्रोवाइड वॉटर अलॉन्ग विद वॉटर इट ऑल्सो प्रोवाइड्स न्यूट्रियस Now nutrients can be classified on the basis of their requirement. Those nutrients which are needed in large amount, they are called macronutrients. The word macro means large, and they are calcium, magnesium, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulphur, and potassium. So that is why when we choose a fertilizer, if our soil is deficient. in any of these we use that fertilizer that is why kpn potassium phosphorus and nitrogen are the main nutrients needed for the soil then there are some nutrients which are not needed in very large amount however they are required and they are the micronutrients micro means small and these are iron zinc copper manganese boron molybdenum and chlorine so six are macronutrients and seven are micronutrients